Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this lovely Sunday morning. And I am here to do a review on a game that recently came out about, I don't know, a month or so ago. And I rented it recently to entertain my family, if you will. And the m game I'm talking about is Super Mario Brothers Wii. Now, this game is a pretty good game. It's very, it's very nostalgic in some way, this game is. Uh, let me explain. You see, when you play the game, there's a few new items that power you up. That is true. But it's very similar. It's almost, it's like it takes sort of after uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 in a way. It, it, that's what it feels like. Feels like it takes off the Super Mario Brothers 3 because you got the Koopa Kids again, and you basically just like in Mario 3, you had to you have to fight through and face these, uh, beat these characters. Now I have not beaten the game yet since I've just rented it, and my nephews were enjoying were enjoying themselves playing it as were enjoying the, it themselves playing the game. So, but uh, it is a very fun game. I mean the new items, like I said, uh, you got. Of course, you get the well. As we all know, you get your typical original items like the star and the flower, and you know the fire flower and the mushroom. But also, you get some new items like you got the ice flower. That instead of that, when you power up with that, instead of firing fire at a person, you fire in ice, and it freezes up, freezes the enemy in a temporary block of ice. Um, the other ones are the penguin suit, which I think is obviously useful when you get to the ice world. Uh, another one is the another one, which is probably becoming a popular feature, is the helicopter suit, which obviously looks like a damn ripoff of the Teletubbies, if you know what I mean. And that allows you to, when you use your when you uh, use your Wii remote and you go up like this, it allows you to go real high and avoid a lot of enemies. Now, some of the levels are tricky, even in the early stages. Some of them are tricky. But they're easy once you get used to them. But the more you pr the more you play, the easier they become. And it goes for any of the worlds as soon as you advance. But uh, overall, this game is a, a very good game. I mean, it's got good graphics. And like I said, it follows suit of the original NES game, especially Mario 3. Um, and and here's, here's the good thing about this. Here's the good thing about this. Just as they advertise, and we've seen many in many DS games, I think, and all that, you can finally play as both Luigi and Mario at the same time, and even at, play as these two little toads, if you will. I don't know why they added them. But anyway, you can play as those characters, and what you got to do, of course, is rescue Princess Peach. Peach from Bowser. Now, here's the, here's, here's one big difference. You might remember Mario 3 when we hit the we hit that castle in the middle, that little small fortress, if you will. We took on that guy that was like this, you know. But now it's kind of switched up to where you face the Koopa Kids not once but twice. You face them in the small fortress slash castle, and then you face them again in the bigger castle. That, the the thing is, when you face them in the bigger castle, when you face them in that bigger castle. Uh, that magic, I don't know what his name is, that Koopa, or whatever his name is, I don't know who it is, Magic Koopa or something like that, comes out and uses his magic wand and kind of changes the stage a little bit, like the floor goes up and down or something like that. So basically, besides those differences, you know, it's almost very similar. And like I said, level's a little bit more trickier and things like that, you gotta, you know, once you get the hang of it, it'll be easy. But it is a fun game. And it is fun if you have one or two players. If you have two players, and maybe even three. Because here's the fun part. When you die on a two-player mode, you can actually have your partner save you. Because what you do, when you die, you float up in this little bubble, and your partner has to pop it to release you. Another th good thing about this is the added bonus stage is the added mini-games, like free-for-all. Basically, free-for-all is allowing you to go through all the state, all the selected stages on there. And even afterwards, you can 
favorize what your favorite stage is and use that as a free for all. But free for all allows you to go through all the stages selected, even up to the final world, to see if you can do your best there. Another thing about it is it allows you to have a study guide. So let's say you're playing Mario and you can't, you know, figure out a, a, a castle or something like that. You can't figure it out. Luigi comes in in sort of like a demo and demonstrates for you how it's done. And the same goes for Luigi. If you're playing Luigi, Mario comes in as your study guide. You, you get the idea. Um... But besides that, overall, it's really good. I mean, also the other mini games, the coin battle, obviously you got to collect coins. And then, of course, you got the toad houses where you get your items. The difference about some of the toad houses, those are the similarities of this. The red toad houses are sort of like, um, well, sort of like that uh, card game you saw in Mario 3. But instead, it takes a reference off Mario World to where you got to climb on a fence and you gotta press one, one if you will, on your Wii remote and hit the thing so that it turns around. And of course, if you match the right items, you get them. Get them as many times as you can. The only thing you want to avoid is the Bowser Jr. and the Bowser uh, signs in there. Because if you hit two Bowser signs or two Bowser Juniors, game over. Uh, but overall, it is a it is a good game. I mean, the, good game and. Uh, the yellow toad houses are more like star items and all that. You gotta, there are some challenges to where you gotta like.